We're back in the studio with Michael to talk about the hero ingredients in our amazing Circadia products. Thank you for being here with us. Yes, of course. And I'm really excited to talk about this because we always get questions about, you know, some of the feature ingredients that we have in the products. Um, a lot of these I think that we're going to talk about are ones that we end up discussing a lot in our educational classes and courses at trade shows and of course during product knowledge sessions. So really excited to do a deep dive into what makes a lot of these unique and special and different and even more specifically how we use them together in some of the formulas. Wonderful. Well, why don't we start with talking about some of our common ingredients, ingredients and ingredient profiles that you'll find throughout our line. Sure. I mean, I would say when we look at the different ingredients that we utilize, I mean, it's literally hundreds of different feature ingredients. And I think oftentimes it's important to make a distinction when we say active ingredients, you know, that means a lot of different things to uh, different people. Um, you can look on a, a certain product and you can see an active box or a drug facts box. And that gives a distinction of what type of product it is. Oftentimes an SPF will have to have drug facts box on it. Um, or if we're making a specific claim on a product, an acne claim, whether it's benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid, you know, those will have to be labeled and categorized a little bit differently. But a lot of times when we're talking about um, efficacy of ingredients, we'll talk about the actives that are in those. And those are really performance ingredients, you know, terms like cosmeceutical or um, medical grade ingredients. What those really mean is that we have a certain level of expectation of performance performance from that product and ultimately from the ingredient profiles that are put together in that product. So, uh, but really when you look at it, the FDA just recognized, is it a cosmetic or is it an OTC drug or is it a pharmaceutical drug? Um, so really those are the main categories. And when we concern ourselves as a cosmetic, almost everything that we're utilizing falls under that category. So excited to talk through that and help to make those distinctions today. Fantastic. Tell us a little bit more about the surfactants that Circadia uses in our product. Sure. So um, uh, we use a number of different surfactants. And this is an interesting conversation because early on, some of the writing that my grandfather was doing long before Circadia was even a company uh, was on surfactants and the use of certain surfactants in products. Uh, we're in a day and age now in personal care where we have a lot of different options. Uh, the surfactants come from different sources, but the main goal is to make sure that the surfactants or surface active agents, as the word is designated as a short abbreviation uh, for that phrase specifically, uh, is designed not to disrupt too aggressively the, the barrier, the, the integrity of the skin, right? And it, all surfactants are designed to emulsify oil uh, in one way, shape, or form. But what we really want to do is make sure that we're not breaking down or disrupting too much that acid mantle. We want to get rid of that buildup, that oil, the dirt, the debris that's built up on the surface of the skin, but we don't want to disrupt the integrity of the acid mantle. So most of the personal care surfactants that you find in the industry um, are designed to do just that. A lot of what was used many years ago, terrible for the skin. You know, they're designed to just get rid of everything that was on there. Uh, and you know, then we have uh, things that are designed to re-pH the skin. That's where toners came into the industry. So we're kind of past that. Um, you still have brands that will utilize toners to be able to, you know, take that step um, of utilizing that, but not necessarily designed to re-pH the skin. But the surfactants that we use in the Circadia line, um, Step and Mild is one that we use. We use it in the lipid replacing cleansing gel. We use it in the micro exfoliating honey cleanser. And the goal there again is just to make sure that we are emulsifying the oil that we want to remove from the surface of the skin, but it's not too aggressive that it's going to disrupt the function of that acid mantle and that very specific pH that we're trying to maintain. 